Hello there. I'm Darren. You remember me. I came to see you not so long ago regarding your pension. It's all going through at the moment, as you know. And what some of you will be wondering what to do about the nomination of benefits in the event that something happened to you. Now, there is a special form for that, as you'd expect, and here it is. I'm going to send it across to friends so you can disseminate it through the company. The obvious things on there first of all, your full name goes just there, and that's your full name, including middle name preferably, and your plan number in the box below. That number will be attached to the documentation you will receive shortly once your first contribution has gone through. It's going through this month, um, and so in the next fortnight or so, you'll get a pack welcoming you to Royal London, and on that will be your personal reference number. So you fill this form at that time. Now, going down to how you nominate people, there are some guidelines to this. It's not as clear cut as people think it is. There are two options on the Royal London form. The first one, option one, at our discretion. That's the Royal London trustees allowed to choose who it goes to. Option two, at my direction up there, you decide exactly where it goes. Now, I know most people will think option two is the one I want then. The problem with that is that if you make that decision, let's, let's look at a couple of scenarios. If you were to, if you're married, and you leave it to your spouse and you both go out in the car tomorrow have a crash and both get killed you have two little children that's fine but what actually happens because you've made it in your direction the payment goes directly to your wife who is no longer alive either and therefore it then gets passed down in her estate and therefore is potentially taxed and will take longer because it'll be part of a probate process. Um, not just probate, probate's fine, but if you've not actually got a will in place, you also have to go through intestacy, intestacy which takes even longer. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Another scenario, probably not so dramatic, but just as possible, you have nominated your spouse, and two or three years down the line, you haven't updated things and you've broken up. You're now with a new party, waiting for your divorce to go through so you can get married perhaps, and then you get run over by a bus. At your direction, your ex-partner, your even whether you're divorced or still or not, because she's the named party on your direction, they must follow that and your former spouse will get the money, your current partner would not. So that's the reasons for not to not necessarily follow that so i'm going to talk about at, at, at our di direct uh, at our discretion which is option one now what you need to do on this is tick option one on the box here and then you still nominate the people you want so nothing's changed but what makes a difference here if you think about this as, as rooms if the person's in the room i.e that table of names well, then the trustees will know who you want the money to go to and they will still give it to those people now here i've given my lovely spouse 99 percent not a hundred percent i could give them a hundred percent that's not a problem but that scenario of us both dying together in a car crash would still be an issue because they wouldn't know who she wanted to give it to so by saying 95 99 and then my two children or my my daughter and her son so grandson so you can nominate anybody you want i've given them half percent each so it gives a total there still of a hundred percent now if my me and my wife now go out and get a car crash bang at their discretion they'll decide well we won't give it to the spouse because she's not here anymore but we also know he wanted his daughter and his grandson to get 50 percent each so let's make it 50% of the whole fund now, rather than just 50% of the remaining bit they didn't give to the spouse. So now they give the whole 100% split 50-50. Surely that's a better option. This also allows them, I've nominated those people there, and my daughter has another child. And I've forgotten to update this. When it comes to the claim, because I'm dead, they will look at that and say, 
well, he's nominated his grandson, quite clearly he wanted his family to get it. We can give it to the other child as well. That would probably be what he wanted. So they would actually split it three ways, not two ways, in line with what they think my wishes would be. So unless I've specifically said, don't give it to him, then they would do that. So that gives you a little bit more flexibility. The other advantage, the other thing is here, they would do that anyway, even if he only just put my spouse 100%. They would still look at, at their discretion, whether the spouse is dead, would it be the children, would it be the grandchildren, etc. They'll do that. But the difference is, unless they're on this list, and you've ticked yes here on the right hand side, the tax implications are different. That's the only difference. So if you don't put them on there, they'll still get the money at discretion, but somebody will have to tell them that that's those people exist so my daughter would have to tell them that her children should have been on the list and they will consider that they won't necessarily do it but they'll consider it um, and think if that seems reasonable they'll do it but if I put them on the list with a yes then they definitely are considered but more importantly if they're not on that list they're not in the room and if they're not in the room they don't get the tax concessions at the moment Anybody on this list, if you die, no matter how big your fund is, will get the whole amount tax free. If they're not on the list, they will probably be taxed. If it goes into someone's estate, then they will be taxed as inheritance tax of 40%. So just a little tip there, nice and simple. So first of all, just to recap, name and policy number on the front, Tick option one, list the people you would like in the proportions you really want to. So in this case, I clearly want my wife to have my pension if I die tomorrow, because she's going to need it to live on. But when she goes, I'd like it going to them. Now, when, now if, if it goes to my wife tomorrow, the first thing that I would do as an advisor, if it wasn't me, would be to go back to that person, or either spouse, and say, right, you, you've now got this fund. Who are you going to nominate? And it carries on the same way you just fill another form in all right don't forget to sign it don't forget to date it if you've got more than fits in that box you can tick that box and add another sheet of paper now when you fill these in i would like a scanned copy sent to me at my email address and you keep the original keep it with your will or important papers so that people know it exists because if you're dead someone needs to know it exists so leave that form tucked away. You might want to give a copy to Fran as well to make things simpler, but you don't have to, it's personal. And I would suggest you update this form at least every year, check it's still up to date, because there's nothing worse than coming to somebody dying in 15, 20 years time, and their life has changed significantly in that period. And we dig out a form that's got a 2020 date on it. They're gonna to have to think, if it's at the discretion, they'll have to think, did he want none of that to change? Has nothing changed in that period? It raises some questions. If it was only the last month you did the form, we know it's current. So do a fresh one every year or so anyway. Just send me a copy. We'll make sure it's current. All right. So that's me. Thanks very much. And if you've got any questions, you can call me or email me. Uh, my details will be on the email I sent to Fran. All right. Thank you very much.